us live to the United Nations Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, brief to the press at the annual meeting of the International Bodies Executive Board in Kenya's capital, Nairobi. Thank you. Nick Gudimba, uh, CGTN Africa. Thank you so much. So I have two questions. So, um, the first question is, uh, the crisis in Sudan is training resources in bordering countries. Uh, because without a doubt, people are moving for safety. What's being done by the UN agencies to support these countries to help them those escaping from the conflict? Number two is um, a lot of focus has gone into silencing the guns in the region, which is a very noble and powerful idea. So, but there's a hidden turmoil um, as a result of the child crisis in the whole of Africa. Is the UN awake to this overshadowing of a real crisis? What's been done to mitigate the Sorry, I couldn't understand. On the, on the drought in the Horn of Africa, what you're doing on the drought. That's the second question. Now, we have uh, two dimensions. UNHCR is now very active in all neighboring countries in order to support, uh, with obviously in close cooperation with the authorities of those countries, the uh, refugees uh, that uh, are coming out. We have, um, uh, as I mentioned, uh, UNHCR has already uh, estimated that more than 100,000 people have fled the country and they did their contingency planning for 800,000 people uh, in order to be able to respond to a major outflow if uh, the conflict goes on. Uh, on the other hand, uh, we have uh, a, um, a uh, comprehensive uh, drought response plan uh, for East African countries with a component for Kenya, uh, in which uh, all the UN agencies have been involved, in which we have made a, a very strong financial appeal to the international community, and in which we are doing everything we can to minimize the dramatic impact of the drought. Um, uh, I was in Somalia uh, just uh, less than an hour ago, and uh, I witnessed how the drought was again creating the risks of famine in Somalia. Uh, I know how uh, terribly uh, impacted has been uh, part of the territory of Kenya, uh, and uh, the UN is active in these two countries and the other countries of uh, East Africa in order to provide the maximum possible assistance to the governments and to the populations in relation to this very dramatic, clearly impact of climate change um, in countries that, as I mentioned, have not contributed much to, for climate change itself. Canadian Broadcasting. Uh, Secretary General, you spoke about um, being hopeful but not confident. I want to ask you, what does spillover of this conflict, if it can't be stopped, look like in your mind on neighboring nations? Now, I'm very concerned, first of all, with Chad. Uh, the epicenter of this conflict still remains to a certain extent in Darfur, independently of what's happening in Khartoum. And uh, Chad is a country that is in a democratic uh, transition. Uh, and uh, Chad uh, has been threatened, as you know, by militias uh, operating in Libya. Uh, and uh, um, uh, it is absolutely essential to massively support Chad in the present situation. Uh, on the other hand, um, we have other countries in the region that are uh, in their own peace processes. Ethiopia is in a peace process. It is absolutely essential to avoid any spillover from Sudan uh, to Ethiopia. South Sudan is in a slow and uh, difficult uh, process to implement the agreements that were made and uh, uh, any uh, uh, disturbance uh, in relation to South Sudan would be uh, extremely dangerous uh, and uh, uh, obviously uh, other countries that are neighboring countries uh, but uh, not facing the same kind of transition uh, uh, would also inevitably uh, um, uh, face negative uh, impacts uh, of the conflict in Sudan, especially if there is a massive outflow of population. Thank you. Uh, Evelyn, Associated Press. Thank you. Um, what's been the response from Moscow on the Black Sea Green Initiative? You know, the extension from May 18. Are you more or less optimistic that this will be extended? And what do you say to critics who say China and Turkey and the rest of EU countries are the greatest beneficiaries of these initiatives as opposed to the developing countries, mostly in Africa? The second part was? 
on the critics who say that EU countries, you know, China and other, uh, Turkey and all these countries are benefiting more from the initiative than developing countries like in Africa? No. First of all, as I know, uh, I have presented a new proposal uh, for the extension, the improvement and the expansion of the Black Sea Initiative to the presidents of the Russian Federation, uh, the Ukraine and uh, um, uh, Turkey. Um, uh, I uh, was informed that uh, the Kremlin is uh, looking into the proposal and uh, uh, that uh, there would be uh, a response uh, uh, to my proposal. Uh, at the same time, uh, there is a delegation led by Rebecca Greenspan that in the context of the different uh, uh, permanent contacts that we have had uh, with the Russian Federation uh, in relation to the Memorandum of Understanding about the facilitation of Russian exports uh, food and fertilizers, uh, Rebecca Greenspan will be back in Moscow uh, this week. So we are actively engaged. If you ask me if I am optimistic, I will answer with uh, uh, my usual um, uh, quote, uh, um, Jean Monnet. Uh, I am not optimistic nor pessimistic, I am determined. I think this is good for the world, I think this is good for the parties, and uh, the UN will do everything possible uh, to make it happen. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if one looks at the exports from the Ukraine, uh, you have two kinds of exports. Uh, you have corn for animal feed, and it goes essentially to developed countries because most developing countries do not use um, uh, corn for animal feed. Um, and you have uh, uh, grains for um, uh, human consumption. In the grains for human consumption, the majority goes to developing countries. But obviously, uh, countries like China uh, uh, or uh, others uh, are also developing countries. Uh, and uh, um, uh, we have uh, sometimes more difficult capacity in African countries to be able to have access to markets. Uh, that is the reason why um, beyond the, the, uh, um, the volumes directly exported by the Ukraine, and several African countries have benefited. I'll give you an example. Egypt uh, is an important uh, um, client of those exports, uh, we have the World Food Program that has been conducting a series of um, shiploads uh, heading to countries uh, in difficult circumstances, most of them in the African continent. Uh, to give an example, Somalia was one of the priorities of the World Food Program. So I believe that uh, we have a system that obviously um, uh, as it, as it was said, uh, a meaningful part of it also goes to developed countries, but even that has a positive impact to all countries because it brings prices down. And when you bring prices down, everybody benefits, and namely the least developed countries are the ones that benefit the most. Thank you. Any one more question? Yes, ma'am, please, and then we'll have to go. One, one, one second, please. If you could identify yourself. Mr. Antonio Guterres, you understand this is not the first time Sudan is facing a crisis. These crises have been there since whatever time we've been experiencing them. However, we'd like to know, it's not the first time the United Nations is facing this issue. Is there a different approach in implementing this time to tackle this once and for all? Otherwise, could we say that the UN has failed to keep peace in Sudan? As of now, thank you. Sorry, I didn't understand. If, if My is name is Pasio Teleo. Has the UN failed to keep the peace in Sudan? That question is a difficult question because this is taken all by surprise. The UN was taken by surprise, and all the other organizations that I have uh, uh, met and uh, all the other countries I'm in dialogue with were taken by surprise by the present crisis. Uh, we were hopeful that the negotiations between the two would be successful, and uh, we have seen important progress uh, in the negotiations for a transition for a civilian government. So we were not expecting this to happen. Uh, to the extent that we 
and many others were not expecting this to happen, we can, we can say that uh, we failed uh, to avoid it to happen. Uh, but uh, uh, I, I don't think there is anything we should have done that we didn't. Uh, to avoid it, uh, because as I mentioned, we were entirely convinced that this would not happen. Great. Thank you very much, Secretary General. Thank you.